Hi, Rob Rocks here for Point Blank Music School. This is the third part of the multi-series Making a Track in Logic Pro X. In this part, we are talking about the final steps and how you should deliver your songs to clients. If you want to learn more about mixing and music production, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com. At the end of your creative process, you'll have to make a few decisions. The first thing that's important to me is the client's view. So you have to think about who's going to listen to the song and what is it for. Do you want to send the track to an artist, label, film company or management? And do you have to compete with tracks from other producers, writers or mixing engineers? A good starting point is always to AB your track to tracks that are already released in terms of loudness, frequencies, um, the balance of the vocals, how much bass do I need, for example, is it a radio mix or is it a club mix. After I produced the track, I stripped it down to a few stems and I always start a new project because I feel it's good to have a new perspective and I might come up with new ideas. As I told you in part one, all my stems over here and all my stems are rooted to my Submaster channel, which is over here. This Submaster channel is for coloring EQ compression, followed by my final master bus, which is only for limiting purpose. The first thing I'm going to do is I bypass all the plugins for now. Let's listen to the track without limiting and without the submaster. So this mix is a bit too loud, so I always start with a simple gain plugin. In this case, I reduce the income level minus 3 dB. Um, you can check it over here. The, the level should be between minus 3 and minus 6 dB to have enough headroom for the mastering process. A little bit of stereo imaging over here. Followed by the SSL compressor. There's not a lot of compression going on, but this one is great for coloring the sound and glue all the elements together. It also adds a little bit of top end. After that, I'll have a mastering EQ, a mid-side mastering EQ. Not a lot of settings over here. The only important thing is the mono maker. So below 80 Hertz, everything is mono right now, which is pretty important for radio mixes. And the last plugin is a multi-band compressor in mid-side mode with a long release. I always use this one in mid-side. I feel that the mid-side mode sounds bigger than the stereo mode. i show you that. just widens the track a little bit. A little bit of tube excitement. Oh, sorry. And again, a little bit of stereo imaging.
as you can see, I have one stereo imager over here. <clears throat> Sometimes I use the stereo width over here and I have a third stereo imaging at the end. Um, this is just because I feel if I just use one, maybe this one, and I increase the sound like that, the mix is getting sharp or harsh. So I use three different plugins for the stereo imaging. After all the processing on the Submaster, I go to my, my limiting channel over here. The input gain should be minus 3 dB before I start the limiting. So I add another gain plugin with plus 2 dB. So over here we have around minus 3 dB. These are my favorite limiters and I really like how they work together. Um, I always try to have minus 3 dB gain reduction on each limiter to avoid distortion or a squash master. So the first one is uh, the isotope maximizer and you can see it has gain reduction around minus 3 dB. The next one is the Pro L with around minus 1.5 dB gain reduction. Um, I, th I feel this limiter sounds a little bit more urban while the isotope sounds a lot cleaner and transparent in this mode. And for the final limiter, sometimes I use the Voxango Elephant, but in this case, I use a brick wall limiter. Again, minus 2 dB gain reduction. Just make sure on the final limiter that you have the output gain to minus 0.2 or minus 0.3 lots of mastering engineers they they set this to minus 0.5 after you you have your final master uh, make sure you always a b with a, a reference i'll choose this reference over here because it has the same so same elements than my production. And it goes directly to the output. I have a, a metering over here. So you have a, an RMS of minus nine. I think today you should try to achieve a, an RMS value of minus eight. So when I play my master, it's a bit louder. So it's around minus 8.3, minus 8 RMS without the vocals. So right now I think we're good to export this master. I choose file, export, oh no, sorry, bounce project or section. The short key is... Um, Command B, and I always bounce the file in 16 bit wave. Just make sure if you produce the track in 24 bit that one of your limiters has enabled the dissolve function to 16 bits. I feel the Pro L has a really nice sounding dessert function <clears throat> so i always export in 16 bit make sure that the normalize function is uh, is set to off 
and that's it. I never use the MP3 function in Logic. Uh, I don't like the, the the sound of the compression. I know lots of people, they convert their WAV files in iTunes. I don't like that either. Um, I use an external program called XLD. Um, that sounds best to me. And I think it's a free free software and it has different options, but one of them is the lame encoded MP3. So this is the best way for me to convert WAV files into MP3s. I hope that helped for finalizing your tracks. Thanks for watching.